little something of, of Jiva Goswami's description in uh, a book called Champu, where Jiva Goswami, he says that uh, although Rohini had given birth to Balaram, residents of uh, Gopal were feeling subdued. They weren't so happy. And even Balaram himself, a little baby, who is the source of all spiritual strength and happiness, he also wasn't so happy, except for when he sat on the lap of Mother Yashoda, and Mother Yashoda was pregnant with Krishna. <laughs> and then Balaram became very happy. So it reminds me of this time right now, the lockdown. Although we can have some Krishna Kata and associate with each other a little in this way, we still feel a little subdued. We don't feel completely happy because we wish that we could see each other, give some hug to the devotees, sit down and take the sadam together, do kirtan together. That's the, the way the devotees like to associate. So I'd like to speak with you something tonight, share something with you, a very special pastime. This We're going to explore a little bit from chapter 80 of the 10 I'll speak about the pastime of Sudama Vipra, who interestingly is sometimes also addressed as uh, Sridham, uh, and uh, also is known uh, by some other names in, in Vedic culture as well. Uh, it, it, uh, this pastime, we'll be speaking about it from different commentaries, from the Bhagavatam song, and from a few different literatures. It's a very wonderful and important pastime to study. So for those of you who don't know, this is a, Sudama Vipra was a fellow disciple of Krishna in the ashram of the Buddha Sandapani Muni. And after their education was over, the two close friends left the ashram and they went their separate ways in life. And Krishna, he became the ruler of Dwarka. And Sudama was a very poor householder. But although he was very poor, he was very rich. <laughs> read a few verses. This verse is kind of an invocation verse. I, I think of it as a kind of Mangala Charna verse for this pastime. This is from the 80th chapter. It's the second verse and spoken by Maharaj Parikshit to Shukadeva Swami. He says, Konu Sutra Sakrit Brahman Uttama Shloka Sat Kataha Virmeta Vishesha Bhyo Vishana Kama Marganai. O Brahman, how could anyone who knows the essence of life and is disgusted with endeavoring for sense gratification, give up the transcendental topics of Lord Uttama Shloka after hearing them repeatedly. So Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur in his uh, Sartha Darshani commentary explains here that there are many persons who, even after hearing about the topics of the Lord, even so uh, he says these are people who don't understand. They, they, they may have actually understood the essence of life. If someone actually understands the essence of life, they won't give up Krishna consciousness. He says a further qualification is to be Vishana Kama Marganai, which is disgusted with material sense gratification. Can I just ask the devotees, everybody, to please mute your mics, okay? I can hear someone talking in the background. It's a little distracting. Thank you. So uh, he says that, that when someone has experienced a real taste of Krishna consciousness, then automatically they become disgusted with the inferior taste of material pleasure. Now this is spoken about also in the 11th canto later on by Krishna to Uddhava in the 20th chapter. And he uh, gives a famous verse you may be familiar with. He says, that someone he speaks of is they've awakened their faith in Krishna Kata and Nirvina Sarva Karmasu they're disgusted with all material activities they understand that, that uh, sense gratification is very nasty. It's going to cause me so much suffering. 
But Parichigay Pinishraya, still they can't give it up. Even though they, they have some faith in Krishna Kata, they know that, that sense gratification is going to cause me all kinds of trouble, but still they can't give it up. What should they do? So this verse from the 80th canto is a kind of similar statement that Krishna later on gives in 11th canto. Krishna goes on in the 11th canto to say, Satoba jeta mamrita shadhalur dhudanishchaya jusamanish tatan kama dupo darpanish chagari. He said, no problem. Even you may be doing your sense gratification, but while you're doing that sense gratification, you lament about it. And you understand this is going to cause me all kinds of suffering. And even while you're engaged in that, he says, Toto Bajeta Mam Krita, you should worship me with affection, Shadhalur, with faith, Judah Nishaya, with great conviction. I'm never going to give up worshiping Krishna. So this verse then of the 80th uh, chapter, the 10th canto, this pastime, speaks about the determination of uh, a great devotee, Sudama Vipra. Sudama Swami, he begins to speak to Maharaj Prashad. He says, Krishna sits Sakar Kashchid, Brahmano Brahma Vitama, Virakta, in the Arte Suprasadatma, Jitendriya. He says, So this uh, Brahman, Sudama, he was very, very dear to Krishna. He was a very good friend of Krishna. He was very learned in Vedic knowledge. He was detached from all sense gratification. He was in the Yartesu, Prasanatma Jitendriya. He controlled his senses, Jitendriya. He was very, very peaceful. Jiva Goswami in Lagavashana Toshan, he says that because he was fixed in bhakti to the Lord, he was detached from sense gratification because his mind was devoid of lust and lamentation. A, a similar statement is made in Madhulil of Chaitanya Chaitanya where Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami says, Krishna Bhakta Nishayana He's peaceful. But Bhukti Mukti Siddhi Kami Sapale Asanta Those devotees, those persons who desire a liberation, material enjoyment, uh, sense gratification, and some perfection, yogic perfection, they're Asanta. They're all unpeaceful. So, so seeing that they were approaching the point of starvation, one day Sudama's wife requested her husband, you please go to Dwarka, because I know you're friends with Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and request some charity from him. And his, uh, Sudama Vipra's thoughts about this are described in the Garga Samhita in the sixth canto. He thought to himself, Katam tu yachanam kurve, chira drisva, sukam priyam, nilobat tu bavet pritir. So he thought to himself, How can I go to my old friend Krishna and ask something from him? Hmm? He said, if I do that, it may chase away his love for me. Krishna sees that I have some. If Krishna sees that I have some motivation, then his love for me may be less. Now, in the next verse in the 10th canto, 80th chapter, Sukadev Goswami speaks something about the wife of Sudama Vipra. Now, sometimes devotees, they demonize the wife. They say, oh, she's just a materialistic person. She's pushing her husband, harassing him. That uh, Sudama Vipra was living as a householder, but Yadrikshaya Upapaina, he would just accept whatever came on his own. Uh, he wouldn't try for things on his own. And in this way, he was maintaining his, his wife, his bharya, in his household life. And it's mentioned particularly Kuchailashya, 
Right? His wife was not nicely dressed. In shoot, shama. She was very hungry, shoot, and shama. She was very emaciated, right? as was Sudama Vipra. Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur comments that his wife had the same qualities as Sudama Vipra. And it, the word indicates that actually his wife was even more tolerant than Sudama. Because whatever she got as food, she would serve to her husband first. And if there's anything left over afterwards, then she would take that herself. In his Bhavarta Deepika commentary, Srila Sridhar Swami, the famous commentary in the Bhagavatam, described that Sudama's wife was not nagging him like a low class person. Rather, she was unhappy because she didn't have any food to feed her husband. Her concern was not about herself. She wasn't a materialistic wife just nagging her husband, we need more wealth, we need more opulence. Mm -hmm. She was concerned, I don't have enough to feed my husband. And her husband was her everything because her husband was a great devotee. She didn't want to ask me either. She knew uh, that uh, Sudama didn't like to beg for anything. The only thing he liked to beg for was, you please give me Krishna Bhakti. I'd like to turn a little bit to a very wonderful book called Sri Krishna Vijay, which is written by a devotee named Haladhar Basu, better known as Gunaraj Khan. This uh, book was written in the late 1400s. It was very much appreciated by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who spoke about it in Chaitanya Charitamrita. He said that, that uh, this Gunaraj Khan, I become sold to Gunaraj Khan and the descendants of Gunaraj Khan because of his wonderful descriptions of Krishna as the son of Nanda Maharaj. So in the 36th chapter of Sri Krishna Vijay, Gunaraj Khan describes some, this pastime of Sudama Vipa with some interesting details that are not found in the Bhagavatam. Along with our discussion, we'll look at some Upanishads, we'll look at some different Puranas and some different commentaries. And sometimes the details are given in a little different way. Jiva Goswami comments elsewhere that when such a thing happens, we shouldn't become disturbed and think, oh, this, what Prabhupada says in Krishna book is the only way, and this Sri Krishna Vijay, we don't accept that. So Prabhupada himself glorifies Sri Krishna Vijay, Mahaprabhu glorifies it. But then how do we reconcile the fact that sometimes there's little different details given? Jiva Goswami gives one explanation in several places and writings. And he says that sometimes the Lord, he performs the same pastime repeatedly, but in different Divya Yugas. And the pastime will be a little different in different times. Sanatana Goswami also describes this in Brihad Bhagavad he says that Krishna, uh, sometimes he puts a ring through the nose of Kaliya after he's subdued Kaliya. And then he makes a rope out of all the cloth of the uh, Nagapatnis that they've offered to him. He makes a rope out of their, of their, uh, uh, their, their pieces of cloth. And he puts that rope through the ring and Kaliya's nose. And then he begins to ride Kaliya down the, the Jamuna River like a horse. And he says sometimes he doesn't go to Mathura with Akura, rather he goes on the back of Kaliya. And Kangsa gets a big surprise. This is one example, a couple of examples of how pastimes are a little different in different places. So Gundagraj Khan says that after Sudama Vipra was requested by his wife that you please go to see your friend Krishna, Sudama told her, how can I go to my friend without some offering? Whenever we go to visit the Vaishnavas, whenever we go visit Sadhu, whenever we go to see Guru, we should bring some offering. Chanakya Pandit says, when we go to see a king, when we go to an astrologer, when we go to a doctor, when we go to a Guru Dev or Sadhu, we should bring some offering with us. But they didn't have anything. Actually, in Sudama Vipra's house, there were no insects living because they'd all long before starved to death. There was absolutely nothing there. 
And she looked around the house, she couldn't find anything. Gunaraj Khan says that finally in one corner of the room, she found some old flat rice, which was kind of moldy and black. And she didn't have anything else to wrap it with. So she took a torn piece of cloth, which had also turned black from age. And she wrapped that flat rice, that old moldy flat rice in this piece of cloth. And Sudama Vipra then stuck that flat rice under his armpit. And he was going quite a distance to Dwarka to see his friend Krishna. And it was during the summer season, it was very hot. And Sudama Vipra was perspiring like anything. And that perspiration under his arm was mixing with that moldy flat rice. <laughs> and so Sudama Vipra made his way. He was very weak and dirty, he was dressed in rags, but he was constantly meditating on his dear friend, Krishna. He crossed the ocean in a boat and he arrived in Dwarka and he was confused because Sudama was a bit of a village boy and he'd never been to such a place with so many golden palaces and fortresses and crossroads and so much opulence. And seeing that, Sudama Vibra asked, which palace is Krishna's? And they said, all of them. And then Sudama said, which one is Krishna in right now? And they said, all of them. <laughs> the 16,108 queens in Dwarka, and Krishna had a separate palace for each and every one of them. And Krishna had expanded himself in the 16,108 separate forms. And in each palace, he was uh, staying with each one of the queens who didn't understand that Krishna was also with all the other queens and they were thinking Krishna's just attached to me. So then Siddhama just picked out the closest palace which happened to be the biggest one and that happened to be the palace of Rukmini. And he went into that palace and he saw Krishna sitting there on a bed. And when Sudama saw Krishna, he became very ecstatic. And when Krishna saw Sudama, he immediately jumped up and he ran to embrace his old friend. Meanwhile, all the residents in the palace were all dressed in such an opulent way that if the demigods would see them, the demigods would become embarrassed about their own insignificant dress. Krishna's wives and, and associates and servants were dressed in such an opulent way. And they were looking, who is this, this old, emaciated, skinny Brahmin? And Krishna, in his great ecstasy, he sat him down on the bed of Rukmini, the goddess of fortune, and he began to wash his feet. And Srila Prabhupada describes at that time, Rukmini, she began to fan Sudama with a chamara. Because Rukmini, she's not thinking, oh, who is this fellow? Rather, she's seeing the love that Krishna has for this devotee. And this is a significant point. In the spiritual world, the residents there are characterized by their lack of envy. It's not, they don't look at Sudama or someone else in materialistic perception, oh, this who is this poor, nasty Brahmin? He hasn't taken proper bath in so long. They're not thinking like that. Rather, they see the pleasure of Krishna. And they see Krishna, how Krishna is Baba Grahi Janardhan, how he loves the mood of his devotees. And they're tuned into that. Yesterday, we gave a talk about how Krishna is Baba Grahi Janardhan. And we read from a letter Srila Prabhupada wrote in 1968 to Tamar Krishna Maharaj. And Prabhupada told him that it's very good that you're always looking for the good qualities in your God brothers and glorifying and appreciating. He said, this is our business to encourage others. So this is the nature Prabhupada writes in the purport in the fifth canto of the Bhagavatam. He says that the nature of this material world is it's a place of envy. But this Krishna consciousness movement its purpose is to establish a society that's free from envy. So we can be free from envy when, like Rukmini, we don't look at the devotees in a materialistic way. We don't see their wealth. We don't see their education. We don't see their bodily strength or sickness. All we look to see is how much they're pleasing Krishna. So Krishna 
began to bathe and massage the body of Sudama Vipra with his own hands. His body was so thin, his bones were, were showing out. And all the opulent residents of the palace, they became very, very astonished. The 25th verse in this chapter describes the palace residents here thinking, Kimanina Kritampunyam, what kind of pious acts has this Brahmin done? Krishna doesn't behave like this with the other members of the Yadu dynasty when they come to see him. But this Brahmin is so very, very special. Srila Prabhupada in his purport in Chaitanya Chaitamrita, Adilala chapter 17, text 78, he speaks about Sudama Vipra as being socially something less than a general Brahmin. Prabhupada says there, Sudama Vipra was born in a family of Brahmins and he was a learned scholar and a class friend of Krishna's, yet he considered himself unfit to be strictly called a Brahmin. He called himself a Brahma Bandhu, meaning one born in a Brahmin family, but not Brahminically qualified. Because of his great respect for Brahmins, however, Krishna embraced Sudama Vipra, although he was not a regular Brahmin, Prabhupada says, but a Brahma Bandhu, or a friend of the Brahmin family. So at that time, Krishna and Sudama Vipra, in great ecstasy, they hadn't seen each other in so long, they sat down, they took each other's hands, and holding each other's hands, they began to cry. And Krishna then asked Sudama, when I, he said, when I last saw you, you were a brahmachari? Have you gotten married? It was all well for you? But Sudama was so shy that he just sat there and he couldn't say anything. So at this point, someone who's very thoughtful, they may ask a question, what was the answer to the question raised by the residents of Krishna's palace as to why Krishna had so much affection for Sudama. So it's significant, I think, that immediately following this question from the residents of the palace, Shukadeva Goswami recounts the conversation between Krishna and Sudama. And then Krishna brings up an episode from their student days and how on one occasion the wife of their guru, Sandapani Muni, requested the boys to collect some firewood from the forest. And when they went out to get that firewood, a terrible storm arose and, and they couldn't find their way back to the ashram that night. So they huddled together under a tree. The next morning when Sandapani Muni saw that the boys had not returned, he went out searching for them. And when he found them there huddled underneath that tree, you know, standing in a way to protect the firewood they collected from getting wet, Sudama, uh, Sundapani Muni became very pleased with him. He blessed him. And Krishna then, he finishes the story with the following verse, important verse, my grandma used to sometimes quote, which gives a hint of why Sudama was so very dear to him. He says, Naham Ija Pajati Byam, Krishna said that I am the soul of all beings and I'm not so satisfied by uh, some ritualistic worship, some tapas, some, some penances, some discipline, some brahminical initiation uh, as I am. Guru Shushu Shaya Yata by someone who renders faithful service to the spiritual master. So uh, we can see this is why Krishna was so very, very affectionate to Sudama Vipra, not just on his own behalf, although Sudama was a great devotee, but Krishna loved Sudama because Sudama was also a great disciple of their guru, Sandapani Muni. And Krishna appreciates so much when a devotee is faithful to their Gurudev. Another reason, perhaps, for Krishna's affection for Sudama can be found in the Krishna Upanishad. This is the Krishna Upanishad. There's a traditional list of 108 primary Upanishads. Uh, and the Krishna Upanishad in that list is number 96. It comprises part of the Atarva Veda. And therein is some description given how Krishna comes to the material world and how his different associates and devatas, they accompany the Lord. In text 24 states, Sudama, not a domuni, but Sudama Vipra was an incarnation, I guess a partial incarnation or something, 
of Narad Muni. So this perhaps is another reason why Sudama Vipa was so very dear to Krishna. So then around that point, all of a sudden Sudama started looking around <laughs> at the palace of Krishna in Dwarka, which the opulence of it far, far surpassed that of Indra and Amaravati, uh, his abode in the heavenly planets. And then Sudama was thinking, oh my God, I have to offer something to Krishna, but all I have is this old flat rice that I had under my sweaty armpit. Uh, now Sridhar Swami Bhavartha Deepika, he says that Krishna knows the minds of everyone. So he understood that Sudama had brought some rice for him, but Sudama was reluctant to present it. So Krishna at that time smiled at Sudama. Vishnu Chakrabarti Thakur, <laughs> he comments, he says that the Lord was thinking, I'm going to make you show what you brought for me. <laughs> and then, uh, Krishna's smile turned into laughter as Krishna was thinking, how long are you going to keep this precious gift hidden in your cloth? So in the 81st chapter of the 10th canto, where this pastime continues, in the third verse, Krishna then asked Sudama, Kimupayanamanitam Brahman, Ne Bhavata Grihat, and Apyaparitam Bhaktai Premna, Oyeva Me Bhavet, Oyapi Abhavok Abhav. He said, my dear Brahman, what have you brought me? I know you brought something for me. Don't be shy. I, he said, I, I consider even the smallest gift offered by my love, by my devotees in pure love, to be the greatest of gifts. But even great offerings presented by non-devotees don't please me. And there's so many wonderful examples of this in Krishna Lila. But we want to focus on this pastime today. So Krishna then spoke a verse, the same verse, huh? this is uh, in 81st chapter, it's text four, and this is the exact same verse, word for word, that Krishna's also spoke in the Bhagavad Gita, chapter nine, text 26, and maybe Many of you know this verse, or you should know this verse. Shiva Prabhupada is one of his favorite verses he often quoted. Patram pushram palam toyam rome bhaktya prayachati tadaham bhakti paritam ashnami prayatatmana. Krishna says that if someone offers me with love and devotion a leaf, a flower, a fruit, or water, I'll accept it. So now, Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur has commented on his verse in his Sa'arta Barshani, his commentary in Bhagavad Gita, but he's also commented on it in his Sa'arta Darshani in the Bhagavatam. And he gives a little different explanation. And in his Bhagavatam commentary, it's very, very sweet. He says that Krishna says, Patram Pushan Palam Toyam Yomi Bhakti Prayachati. That if someone offers me with love and devotion, Pacham a leaf, a pushpa, a flower, fala a fruit, throw in some water, huh? then I'll accept that. But actually the word ashnami is used, which in the Gita Prabhupada says means he accepts. But the word ashnami actually means I eat. And Vishwanath comments in the Bhagavatam that Krishna becomes so bewildered by love that he'll even eat a flower. Mm -hmm. It has been offered by his loving devotee. And we hear also sometimes in Bhakti Rasamita, Sindhi describes the cowherd boys. Sometimes they tell Krishna, Krishna, close your eyes. I have a special sweet. And Krishna closes his eyes and opens his mouth. And then the boys put a flower inside of Krishna's mouth. And Krishna eats it. Mm -hmm. Because the boys are offering with so much love. And Krishna appreciates that so much. So at that time, Sudama Vipra, looking around and seeing the walls of the palace, which are made out of valuable jewels and gold. He became so embarrassed that how can I present this? There's a queue of demigods standing outside the palace waiting to offer Krishna the most fantastic offerings in all the universe. And I'm coming with this moldy flat rice, which has been under my armpit. And so Sudama didn't say anything. Sudama was thinking to himself, how can my Lord, who, who, who's the husband of the goddess of fortune, eat 
this nasty rice. And by bowing down his head, Vishnu says, the Sudama was revealing his thoughts that my dear master, please don't make me ashamed. Even if you request me repeatedly, I won't give this to you. I've made up my mind. And Vishnu then says that Krishna counted with his own thought. And Krishna was thinking, the purpose that you fixed in your mind when you came here, it should be fulfilled because you're my devotee. And Krishna was further thinking that my devotee has no material desires. The only reason Sudama came here was to please his wife. And then Krishna decided, Dasyami Sampado Martadu Laba. I'll give him riches that even the demigods cannot get. Garga Sanghita, describing his pastime, describes the mind of Krishna. Krishna was thinking, Bharya Pati Bhata Dukkad Dana Sam Chashakur Bhati Tasmad Dhanam Katam Dashe Adatros Cha Tayor Aham. His wife is very chaste and very good wife, very devoted. She's dukkha, she's in so much misery and unhappiness. Dana Sam Chashakur Bhati, she desires some wealth. But how can I give them wealth when they haven't given anything to me? So uh, then Krishna thinks, in the past, my friend has never worshipped me with a desire for material opulence, but now he's come to satisfy his wife. I'll give him riches even the demigods can't get. And then suddenly, Krishna snatched that packet of rice away from Sudama. And Krishna said, Nalita Dupanitam me paramaprinanam sake tapanche yanga mam vishvam eti prithu katambulaha. He said, My friend, you brought this from me. Oh, this is so nice. Huh? Huh? It gives me so much pleasure. He says, these grains of flat rice, they'll satisfy not only me, they'll satisfy the whole universe. Because Krishna is Baba Grahi Janardana. Krishna uh, is described by Vrindavan Das Thakur in his Chaitanya Bhagavad. He says, Jai Se Dravya Seva Kera Sarva Bhavi Kai Naivedyari Vidira O Apiksha Nahi Chai with when Krishna's servant offers something to the Lord, then immediately Kai, the, the Lord eats that. Yeah? He has no desire to wait until all the rituals or offerings are performed. In Vrindavan, Krishna doesn't wait for the gopis to ring a bell. The gopis are making, uh, they're churning butter and they're thinking to themselves, it would be so nice if the son of Nanda Maharaj were to take this butter, that would be the perfection of my butter making. They're thinking like that. And Krishna, knowing the heart of those gopis, he comes and he steals that food. Because in Vrindavan, they don't ring a bell to feed Krishna. Krishna just comes running. Again, in the Garga Sanghita, Krishna describes to Sudama, there's so much happiness when he sees what Sudama Vipras brought, all oh, this very nice, moldy, black, flat rice, which is soaked with the perspiration from Sudama's armpits. <laughs> Krishna said, Idrisa Gokule Bhuktaha, Shesta Pritu Katandalaha, Mata Yashodaya Dhataha, Punastan Naiva Jistavan. He says, My dear friend Sudama, how did you know? In Vrindavan. My mother, Yashoda, used to make flat rice like this for me. I haven't had that kind of rice in such a long time. We're here in Dwork and everybody, they give me all this fancy basmati rice and this and that. But I like that kind of flat rice that my mother used to make for me in Vrindavan. At that time, Krishna took a handful of the rice and he ate it. And he was about to take another handful when Rukmini grabbed his arm and stopped him. Now, Rukmini's behavior has been explained in different ways by different acharyas. In chapter 81, as Krishna book, Prabhupada writes, he says, when food is offered to Krishna with love and devotion, 
and he's pleased and accepts it from the devotee. Rukmini Devi, the goddess of fortune, becomes so greatly obliged to the devotee that she has to go personally to the devotee's home to turn it into the most opulent home in the world. He says, if someone feeds Narayan sumptuously, the goddess of fortune Lakshmi automatically becomes a guest in one's house, which means that one's home becomes opulent. This is the explanation Srila Prabhupada gives um, in Krishna book. Sridhar Swami Bhavarta Deepika gives another explanation. He says that by stopping Krishna, Rukmini was telling Krishna, look, um, blessing this Brahman as much as you have ensures that I'm obliged to bestow great opulence on him. And if you take another handful of his rice, then I'm going to have to move into his home and surrender myself to him. Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur gives another wonderful explanation that I like very much. That Rukmini, she was thinking to herself, this is some really special prasad. And I've got 16,107 co-wives. And they're all going to want some of the remnants uh, of this special rice that Sudama Vipra offered to Krishna. But if Krishna takes another handful, there's not going to be enough for me to share with all my co-wives. And then we'll speak of my co-wives. I also have sisters and wives, servants and so many other persons. If I just even give one grain to each one of them, there won't be enough. <laughs> That's the explanation that Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur offers. Bhaktivinoda Thakur comments on this pastime in Krishna Sanghita in chapter 6. He says, Sudamna Pritti Dattam Chanatandulam Bhuktavan Hari Pasandanam Pradatena Nishtena Natata Suki. He says that even if the most relishable, opulent thing is offered by a non-devotee, Krishna won't accept it. But if an ordinary item is offered with love, the Lord accepts it. And then he says, the example is Sudam Napriti Dhattam Cha. When the Lord ate the rice, the Bhuktavan Hari, that Sudama Vipra had offered. So then Krishna offered some water and some food stuff to Sudama. And Sudama spent the night there in Krishna's palace. And while he was there, he was feeling as though he were in the spiritual world. And Sudama completely forgot all about the request of his wife. It just didn't arise in his heart. He was just so happy to be with Krishna. Rupa Goswami, in his Pajavali, he describes the words of Krishna to Sudama the next morning when Sudama informed the Lord, I'm very sorry, my Lord, but I have to go. I have to return to my wife. Yeah? Rupa Goswami uh, quotes a poet named Sri Hari. Maga ityapa mangalam brajasuke snehin sunyam vachas tisteti pabuta yatabilasitam kur ityadasinatam brumo handa sudama vita nitya vachanam naivo pacharadi de. Smarta Vyabayam Adarena Bhavata Yabhadva Vidarshana. Krishna told him, Maga, don't go. Up among my friend, it's not auspicious, very inauspiciously. Brother Sake, Snehena Sunyam Vachas, for you to speak these words which are Snehena Sunya Vacha, which are devoid of any love and affection. Don't speak like that. To stay the Prabhu, stay here. Huh? Be independent. You can do whatever you like. Huh? You can go wherever you like, do whatever you like. He says, my dear friend Sudama, huh? if you have to go, then I have to say to you huh? that I'll always remember you with love and with respect. In Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, he comments in the Bhagavatam that when Krishna uh, when Sudama left, Krishna began to accompany his friend for some distance. And before parting ways, Krishna offered obeisances and spoke more, spoke more sweet words to Sudama. This is our Vedic culture. 
I've seen very cultured people, sometimes you go to their home and you take some prasadam or something, you exchange some gifts or, or some sweet words together, you do some kirtan or something. And then when you're getting ready to leave, they get up and they walk with you some distance. Sometimes they just walk to the door with you or maybe they walk out to the sidewalk with you or maybe sometimes they walk all the way down the street some distance. This is Vedic culture. And we see that Krishna behaved like this with Sudama. He walked with Sudama and he spoke very, very sweet words to him. Now Sudama, as he was walking along, uh, he thought to himself, Vaham Daridra Papi Yan Kha Krishna Sri Niketana Brahma Bandhuti Smaham Bahubhavya Parirambita. Who am I? I'm just a Brahma Bandhu. I am a very sinful, poor friend of a Brahman. Who is Krishna? He's a supreme personality of God, and he has all opulences, but still he embraced me with his two arms. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Srila Prabhupada speaks about Sudama Vipra as a Brahma Bandhu, or something less than a Brahman. And in that same purport, he concludes by speaking about the devotees in Iskand. He says, the members of the International Society for Krishna Consciousness cannot even call themselves Brahma Bandhus. <laughs> We're less than Brahma Bandhus. Therefore, our only means for satisfying Krishna is to pursue the injunctions of Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who says, Jari Deki Tari Kaha Krishna Upadesh, Amara Gyaga Guruhan Tara Desh. Whoever you meet, instruct him about the teachings of Krishna. In this way, in my order, become a spiritual master and deliver the people of this country. And Prabhupada says, simply trying to follow the orders of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. We speak to the people of the world about Bhagavad Gita as it is. And that'll make us qualified to satisfy the Supreme Personality of God, like Krishna. So Sudama, as he was going along, he was further thinking, Krishna, he treated me like his brother. He made me sit down on the bed that belonged to the goddess of fortune, his wife. And then seeing that I was tired, look, many personally began to fan me. Krishna, although he's the Lord of all the demigods and the most worshipable person, he, he massaged my feet and, and treated me as though I was some exalted demigod. And then Sudama thought to himself, the 20th verse in the 81st chapter describes, Adanuyam danam prapya madhyan uchara namam smaret iti karuno karuniko nunam dhana me puri nada. He said that the Lord he has so much compassion. And that's why he didn't give me any money because he thought Krishna was thinking to himself, this guy, if I give him some money, he's going to completely forget about me, you know, being intoxicated. And Sudama Vipra wasn't upset about it. He wasn't thinking to himself, what am I going to tell my wife? Sudama Vipra was in ecstasy. He was thinking, just see how much Krishna loves me. Vishwanath explains that Sudama was saying, in effect, that Krishna didn't give me anything. That's my great wealth. The fact that Krishna didn't give me anything is my real wealth. And he said another meaning is that instead of offering wealth that was, uh, as the verse describes, a booty or very insignificant, instead, Krishna gave Sudama the treasure of his association. So Sudama was absorbed, like, thinking like that. And finally, he got to the place where his home was. And Sudama became confused because he didn't see his humble mud hut with the holes in the roof anymore. The place he saw where he used to stay, now it was crowded with all these huge palaces, which are full of courtyards and gardens. And there was all kinds of auspicious birds and, and beautiful ponds of water with little lotus flowers growing in them. It was more opulent than, than Amaravati, Amarav, the abode of the demigods. And there were so many very opulently dressed, handsome men and women standing ready to offer services. And Sudama, very confused, he said, where am I? What happened? Whose home is this? What happened? As soon as they saw him, all those beautiful men and women 
They began to sing and play musical instruments to greet their master. And then Sudama's wife got herself ready and came running out to greet her husband. And now <laughs> she resembled the goddess of fortune. Now, Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur explains the night before Sudama returned, his wife had been sleeping in torn rags in a humble hut that was falling apart. But when she woke up the next morning, she found that both she and her home had astonishingly changed. It wasn't just the house that changed, but also now she was very youthful and her beauty had increased. And all of a sudden she was dressed in a very, very opulent way. And for one moment, Sudama's wife was confused. And then she thought, she understood, no, everything's been bestowed by Krishna, by the mercy of my husband. And so when she saw her husband coming, tears of love came to her eyes. And embracing him in her heart, she bowed down at her feet. And surrounded by all these maidservants, she looked like a demigoddess. Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur comments that on his side, Sudama looked the same. He still looked like someone who'd escaped from a, 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 a military prison camp or something. He was so thin and his bones and his veins were showing and he was still wearing the rotten old torn cloth he had when he left. And the reason why, Vishnu explains, why Krishna kept Sudama's appearance like that was so that his wife would be able to recognize him. <laughs> Otherwise, she would become completely confused. Right? And so when he saw this beautiful woman coming to see him, Sudama asked one of the ladies, who, who is this lady? Why is she coming to greet a sinful person like me? And that lady said, that's your wife. <laughs> and Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur says that at that moment, Sudama's body became very young and strong and suddenly became dressed in beautiful clothes with jeweled ornaments and things. And then Sudama and his wife entered their fantastically opulent house and seeing the walls were made out of crystals of emeralds and soft beds and couches made out of ivory and gold and thrones and jewels and pearls hanging everywhere. Sudama thought, this opulence has come as a result of a mere glance of Krishna. The Brihat Sahasranam describes, Sridam uh, Aranka Bhaktar Tam Bhuma Yantindra Bhaibhava that Krishna gave the wealth of Indra on the earth to his starving devotee, Sudama. I mean, in this verse, it's described as Sridama. Sometimes Sudama is described as Sridama. So a question arises at this point. When Sudama Vipra was visiting the Lord in Dwarka, why didn't Krishna just tell him he's going to give him so much money? Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur addresses this, and he says that Krishna didn't tell Sudama that he was going to fulfill the unspoken request of Sudama, because Krishna thought himself inadequate to fulfill that desire. Vishnu says that Krishna was thinking to himself, I have the greatest wealth in the universe. There's no equal to the wealth that I have. But the grains, this black moldy flat rice, soaked in the perspiration from his underarm that my friend brought and offered me with so much love, the more valuable than everything I own. So what, how can I reciprocate with him? I promised. That's my promise. I always reciprocate with my devotee. But I'm confused now. I don't know. How do I reciprocate with him? He thought the only thing I can offer him is the insignificant wealth that's possessed by Lord Brahma, Lord Indra. That's the, the best thing I can offer him in this universe. And so Krishna, silently, without saying anything to Sudama Vipa, because Krishna was embarrassed. Krishna felt defeated by Sudama. Krishna felt embarrassed that Sudama has offered me something so valuable. I don't have anything in my treasury that's the equivalent to repay what he's given to me. So being embarrassed, Krishna was just quiet. And silently, he gave the insignificant wealth uh, that Lord Brahma possessed. Mm -hmm. Sudama's reaction to the benediction given by Krishna is also very important to note. 
most people, when they get great wealth, they tend to forget about the Lord. But this is not the case of Sudama. Shukadeva Goswami, he described uh, Sudama Vipa's prayer to Krishna after he received all that wealth. Tashyai Vime Sorida Sakya Maitri Dasham Puna Janmani Janmani Shai Mahanu Bhavena Gunalayena Visajitas Tat Purusha Prasanga. He uh, thought that the Lord, He's the most compassionate person. He has all transcendental qualities. Dasham Puna Janmani Janmani. He says, if I could just be his servant and life after life, serve him with love and friendship, that will be the perfection. And Sudama Vipra then prayed, may I cultivate such firm attachment for Krishna by the precious association of Krishna's devotees. Sudama Vipra prayed, for the association of the devotees. And Shukadeva Goswami, then he comments on this pastime, Bhaktaya Chitta Bhagavan Hi Sampado Rajam Vibhutir Na Samarta Yatraja Adhirga Bhudaya Vichikshana Swayam Pashani Patam Daninam Mato Bhagavan. If a devotee, uh, lacks spiritual insight, then Krishna won't grant him the opulences of this world. Krishna knows that pride and wealth cause some intoxication and they'll bring the fall down of the devotee. And Vishnu Chakrabarti Thakur explains in this verse, he says that in his humility, Sudama thought that it was due to his lack of qualification that Krishna gave him this wealth. <laughs> Instead of giving him bhakti, he thought, huh, if I had even a drop of true bhakti, then Krishna would have given me even more bhakti as it was a benediction. Instead, he just gave me some wealth. And Sudama was thinking to himself that a great devotee like Prahlad Maharaj, huh, he can remain pure in spite of having all kinds of wealth and opulence but I have to be very careful not to try to enjoy these things separate from the Lord. And Vishwanath Chakrabarti Thakur says that although he was surrounded by inconceivable material opulence, you know, Vishwanath says that he, Krishna gave him the same quality of opulence possessed by Lord Brahma. But Sudama only accepted whatever was necessary to maintain his body in service to Krishna. And he says that Sudama continued sleeping on the ground and fully engaged himself in hearing and chanting about the glories of the Lord. Mm -hmm. So Vishwanath again comments, he says that Krishna doesn't give as much opulence as a neophyte devotee may want. <laughs> in case you're wondering, you know, why hasn't this happened to me? He says, rather, he only gives them those things which are going to help them in their bhakti. And that's seen in the words of Krishna to Yudhisthira Maharaj, a famous verse which Srila Prabhupada commented on, on his own life, where Krishna told Yudhisthira, that if I really favor someone and I take everything away from them, I take all their wealth away, and then when they don't have any wealth left, then Swajana Dupa Dukitam, huh? all the Swajana, all their relatives and friends abandon him. Why do we care? This guy doesn't have any money. And so in this way, Dukkha Dukitam, he suffers one distress after another. Now Krishna says, this is the Anugraha, my Anugraha, my favor. But I remember hearing this verse by itself the first time and thinking to myself, that doesn't make sense. Huh? Because we see there are many bums, there are many uh, street people who don't have any wealth, huh? it, but they're not becoming devotees of Krishna. How can I accept that just if, when someone gets all their wealth taken away, if that's the mercy of Krishna? The next verse is also there. And Krishna describes, Sayadavitatod yoga nirvina syadvinehaya matparai 
Krita Maitra Shaparishi Madhanubrahma. But this, he says, Madhanubrahma, this is really my special mercy. Because he says that in the previous verse, I take away all his wealth. And then when he has no money, everybody rejects him. They don't care for him anymore at all. And he says, Sayatavitatogo Nyavina Shadhaniya, when he becomes frustrated trying to make money, he can't make money anymore. The Matparai Krita Maitrasha. He makes friends with my devotees. And it's through the friendship with the devotees. It is that friendship with the devotees that is the special mercy of Krishna. So indirectly, this verse also tells us something. It's a test to the devotees in our movement. Sometimes we love someone because they're giving so much money to the temple and they're doing so much collection or something. But then sometimes that person later has some problems in their business and they don't have money and they're not able to give money to the temple anymore. Do we still treat them with the same love and affection and respect that we treated them previously? When we are giving lots of money sometimes to the movement, Sometimes we're given flower garlands and everybody claps their hands and they, they beat on the Madunga drums and they say, Ki Jai, and they give you the Mahaprasad and a big picture and something. But when you no longer have money, do they still treat you like that? Indirectly in these verses, Krishna is telling you to stare that through this you can tell who your real friend is, who the real devotees are. The real devotees are not just attached to the money. The real devotees may beat on drums and appreciate because this person is helping to spread Srila Prabhupada's movement. And we bang on the drums and give them some Mahaprasad and a big picture because we want to encourage them to do that service. But the real devotees, they're not attached to someone just because they're given some external thing. Rather, they see the devotion that they offer to the Lord. And they may remember this pastime of Sudama Vipra. And how Krishna was more appreciative of that <laughs> moldy, black, flat rice, which was soaked with the underarm perspiration of Sudama Vipra. If you went to the Sunday feast program and they served out that rice, I don't know how many devotees would come to the Sunday feast the next week. <laughs> we, <laughs> we would have a heart attack. We would complain like anything. Huh? But Krishna appreciated it so much. Krishna thought to himself, this is more valuable than all the wealth that I have. What can I give him to reciprocate? I'll just, all I find is this is insignificant wealth of Lord Brahma and Indra. Let me give that to him. So the devotees may remember this pastime and understand that Krishna is Baba Grahi Janardhan. He's not impressed with the wealth of Indra, but he's appreciative of the humble gift of Sudama Vipra. He appreciates Sudama's rice. So I'm going to stop there and I'd like to request the devotees if anyone has any reflections or comments, I'd like to know what you're walking away with. My humble pronouns to the devotees, someone's commented that uh, sometimes my voice is breaking up. That's probably because of our internet connection. We also have problems with our microphone. Someone wrote me today and wants to send me a, a fancy microphone by post, <laughs> which is a great benediction because we've had two microphones, two wire microphones, and both of them just destroyed. So I'm very sorry that it's not a better recording, better sound. But does anybody have any reflections? I'd just like to know from the devotees. What are you walking away with? What, 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 what do you feel from all this discussion today? Hema Jagannath, do you have any comments, any reflections, or anything? Uh, thank you so much, uh, Madhavananda Prabhuji. It was a wonderful class. What I took away, as you asked, is uh, Krishna uh, takes doesn't take what we give, but Krishna takes how we give. And there is that element of love which he sees, and in spite of all the perspiration, in spite of the simple uh, rise he came up with, Sudama Vipra came up with, Krishna accepted the humility. And so we have to imbibe humility, love, and, and, and thank you so much. But I have um, a, just a small um, comment, if I may, Prabhuji. Um, so, um, 
you mentioned um, about uh, uh, their uh, association when they were with Sandeep Ani Muni. Uh, that love which they built at that time when they were with Sandeep Ani Muni, they, that really stayed with them and that came in handy later. So the kind of relationship we build in our lives, how in the spiritual journey towards the later part of life, where all those nice relationship we have built over a period of five years ago or 10 years ago, how it becomes a bank account, which comes handy at the later point in time. If you could shed some thoughts, uh, it'll be nice. We're supposed to be the professors of love. We're the teachers of bhakti yoga. Take the charger. Hmm? And heard it for now. I'll... Hare Krishna. And uh, we should understand that real love means Krishna consciousness. Otherwise, material love is described as having two characteristics. It's hoitiki and pratiyata. It has some motivation and it's, and it's interrupted. It has an end. The divine love is ahoitiki, apratiyata. And in the Sattva Tantra, it's described, Hari Lila Sutochara, Padeshi Sattva Tantra, Karya Pritastavahara Yata Bhakti Nanashati. That if we want to protect our bhakti, then we should learn to love devotees. And how do we love devotees? Everybody loves someone who gives money. <laughs> Everybody loves someone who cleans the toilets for you or does something like that. But the Sattva Tantra describes that we should love devotees for speaking Krishna Kata. And when we develop relationships like that, those are real relationships, relationships which are ahoitiki. There's no motivation. We don't just love you because you have money. We're not a fair weather friend. We don't love you just when you're doing well and then you lose your money. We don't care for you anymore. It's ahoitiki. It's apratiyata. It's never going to stop. And that is yayatma supersedity. That fully satisfies the heart. So devotees should cultivate relationships like this. I very much like your comment that it's a kind of bank balance that we have through our life when we cultivate loving relationships like this with devotees. And we should always make sure that our relationships are based upon Krishna consciousness hearing and chanting together. And as service, we may be collecting money, we may be cleaning toilets, we may be preaching, we may be doing so many different things. But all of those things are secondary and the primary things, the mukya bhakti is navavidhi bhakti or, or the, the uh, ninefold processes of devotional service, beginning with hearing and chanting. And those are the primary activities that we want to engage in with the devotees. And we also do different services. We, you, you have a beautiful temple there, which the devotees work very, very hard to collect for and build or take possession of. You should be a church. <laughs> so uh, that's a very wonderful service that everyone has done together. And when we cultivate, when we work hard like that together for something, if our motivation is to please Prabhupada and the devotees, that's a wonderful treasure we may keep throughout our whole life. So I very much like your comment, too. Thank you for that. And I, yeah. I, I hope to develop relationships like this with devotees. Uh, another thing I, I would offer, too, is that Rupa, Rupa Goswami in Bhakti Resumita Sindhu, he says, Swajati Yashi Asindhu Sadhu Sandhu Sakovare, that we should associate with devotees, first of all, who are Swajatiya, who have a similar nature, or literally from the same planet. Devotees who are ISKCON devotees, meaning, and we cultivate something, not that other devotees are bad or other Vaishnava associations are not good, but because this is a seva sangha of Srila Prabhupada and our Gurudev. And there's a very kind of wonderful camaraderie and friendship when we grow up together and we do austerities together and we, we do hardship and preaching and things. So that's Swajatiya. We want to associate Swajati Asya Snigda in an affectionate way with devotees, and especially Sadhu Sambha Satova, we want to look for devotees who are more advanced than us. I hope that's... Uh, yeah. Thank you so much, uh, Prabhuji, for your wonderful uh, class. And in addition to having your blissful darshan, uh, we could have the darshan of 
the nice Gita Govinda uh, <laughs> inscription <laughs> in the back uh, of uh, you know Radha and Krishna's wonderful uh, ins inscription given to Lord Jagannath and Jagannath Dham, uh, which is uh, written by Jayadev Goswami. So thank you for that darshan as well. Uh, now I know that Hema Jagannath Prabhu is a true Odia Basi <laughs> because he recognizes the Gita Govinda Kandua. This is a dress that they offer to Jagannath every night. This is Mahaprasad from Lord Jagannath. It's, it's uh, part of the Buddhist Shingaradesh. Hema Jagannath Prabhu knows very well. And just by the way, too, this is also a very special Mahaprasad from Lord Jagannath. This is a silk rope, not one of the ropes they use to pull the cart. But this is a rope they use to tie Jagannath to the cart. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu speaks about this rope in Chaitanya Chaitanya. He says it's an incarnation of the Lord Nanta Sesh. And this red cloth here is also very special. This is one of the layers of Jagannath's body. And one of our Pandit friends in Puri gave this to me. So, And it's also, by the way, this is Mahaprasad from Tota Gopinath. <laughs> so thank you, Hema Jagannath Prabhu, for recognizing that you made my day. You're the first person who give me class every day with this behind me. You're the first person who recognized that. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Anybody, anybody else? else? Anybody else have any questions? Please unmute and ask yeah. Prabhuji. Or any reflections, any comments you may have. Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Thank you so much for uh, having me. Very, very wonderful class on Sudhava's price. Um, I just need a, just, just some clarification on one of the points which you mentioned about the um, Sudama Vipra, Sudama Brahmana, brought this chipped rice, uh, brought it to the Krishna in the armpit. I think I heard also the another version <laughs> of it that, uh, you know, uh, I mean, can you please clarify that, you know, where, where did we uh, originally uh, get this, actually? I mean, I mean, what I heard that, actually, one of the devotees was mentioning about, okay, Sudama Bhutra was a great devotee of the Lord, realized, and uh, the Supreme Personality of God had, and all of them said, devotee, would he do that, you know, bringing that into an armpit and with a full of sweat, <laughs> and then offer to Krishna, and then, uh, you know, it's, Wait, did we, um, yeah, could you please clarify, I mean, where did we, uh, this, this, the, yes, yes, this? Thank you. It's an important question. So we took that point from Gunavad Khan's Sri Krishna Vijay, which uh, was one of the favorite books of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. It's mentioned in Chaitanya Chaitanya and quoted sometimes by Srila Prabhupada. And Gunaraj Khan was very, very dear to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He appreciated very much his description of Krishna Lila given in Sri Krishna Vijay. So it was in Sri Krishna Vijay that Gunaraj Khan mentions this. There's no commentary given, but uh, if I can be so bold to try to apply some principles that we've heard from our acharyas, that Sudama Vipra was a very, very simple person. And first of all, he was so absorbed in Krishna that he's not even conscious of his own body. And so perhaps it was an unconscious way, just thinking about Krishna and being ecstatic to run and see Krishna, that he put that rice under his armpit. Or perhaps there was just simply no other place for him to carry it, being a poor Brahmin, and he, was, he didn't have any bag or anything with him. That's the only thoughts that, that I, could, I could suggest with that. Maybe some other devotees have some comments of their own. Mary Krishna. Hare Krishna. Pranamath Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Aha. Hare Krishna. Dhanur Pranam Prabhu. I had a question actually I had heard long back, where I am not very sure, that Sudama Vipra was proud about his being uh, uh, poor. Like, uh, uh, I had heard some lecture like that. That so Krishna wanted to teach some lesson. Like, uh, I'm not very clear about it, but I heard it uh, somewhere that he was proud about his poverty. Is it true or am I? I, I, haven't, come across, I haven't come across that particular point being stated, but it may be. As we mentioned in the beginning of our discussion, we have different perspectives on this one pastime. 
and different commentators, different literatures are presented in slightly different ways. And we also know that sometimes someone may be proud of their poverty. That can also be a kind of abhiman for a similar kind of mentality we could say is there of uh, Karna. And he wasn't poor, but Karna is described by some of our acharyas that why was it that he didn't surrender to Krishna and, and when Krishna personally came to him and his mother Kunti came to him just before the battle in Kurukshetra and told him, actually, you're the eldest of the Pandavas and you should go, Yudhisthira will surrender to you and you can become the next king and you'll save Duryodhana's life. Why didn't he do it? Because there was uh, one fault in Karna and Karna's fault was he had some self-pity. He, he, he was relishing to feel sorry for himself. And so sometimes devotees, they feel like that. And so it's possible, and some commentator may have said something, I haven't read everything I can't say, that perhaps some explanation is given somewhere that Sudama felt proud of his uh, poverty, and this was his kind of abhiman, he felt sorry for himself. Sometimes that self-pity is a, is a blockade in our service to Krishna. So I haven't come across that particular comment, but I could see where it could be said possibly. And I, 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 it's hard for me to say without seeing where it came from. I hope that's some help, Prime Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else with anything? Okay. And someone says, says Krishna's iPhone <laughs> says, thank you very much for enlightening and enlivening us with this all glorious holiness glory of Hindu Swami Maharaj, so glorious Shiva So if nobody else has any other further comments, then maybe I'll let you go, because actually right now, His Holiness Naranjan Maharaj is doing kirtan, and he wanted me to come and take part in the kirtan, but I told him, Maharaj, I have a class <laughs> right now, <laughs> and if I don't give this class, and Hema Jagannath Prabhu is going to be very angry with me, and I'm going to get in big trouble, and Madhu Pati Prabhu is going to be upset with me, and I'll no, no. Big trouble with him. <laughs> how can we join? We can, how can we join Niranjan Maharaj? Uh, <laughs> is he live? Live? I don't. I don't think he's live streaming, as far as I know. Okay. I'll uh, take my phone and I'll try. If if I have an internet connection, I'll, I'll WhatsApp him a Jagannath Prabhu, uh, a connection okay. if it's possible. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much, Prabhu. Vansha Kalpatru Bishwak Tupa. Vansha Kalpatru Bishwak Tupa. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna, Prabhu. Dhanwad. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much. Haribo. 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 Dhanwad. Hare Krishna. Gaur Govind Maharaj ki jai, Jagat Guru Srila Prabhupada ki jai. Hari Hari Hari. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much, Pandavan. Thank, Thank you. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Wonderful class, Hari Prabhu. Madhupati Prabhu. Uh, yeah. Would you like to have, would you like to announce something? Yeah. So, uh, today evening from 6 p.m. To 6 a.m. tomorrow morning, we have 12 hours kirtan at the temple. So you're all welcome to attend following safe distancing and uh, the 16 rooms. So <clears throat> please attend uh, if you can. Let me take out prasadam. During this entire during that entire time, also uh, the Govindas Prasadam uh, will be on for the entire day. You can uh, avail that also uh, if you may so desire. September thirteenth is Ekadasi, like uh, fasting minimally from grains and beans and we'll be having the Ekadasi Kirtan on that day. And September 17th, Thursday, is the beginning of Pushottam Mas, Adik Mas, until uh, ending October 16th. So, 
Pushottam Mass, as you all know, uh, comes every two and a half years. So it's a very special month uh, where we can increase our devotional service and any devotional service performed during that month, uh, the benefit you get is a thousand times more. Uh, so we'll be having every evening uh, chanting of Jagannath Ashtakam during that time, just like in Karthik month, we do Damodar Ashtakam. Uh, yeah. Anything else, Krishna Prabhu? That's it, Prabhu. Okay. Yes. I think World Holy Name Week is coming soon also. Yes, so World Holy Name Week is coming soon and we are inaugurating it today itself uh, under J. Prakash Prabhu's center of 12 hours Kirtan. So, yep. But during the World Holy Name Week, uh, we can increase our chanting more. Uh, every day we have chanting together in the morning from 5 o'clock, 5 to 6.30. Please join that. And 6.30 to 7 is Bhagavatam class every day, Monday to Friday. So please join. Hare Krishna. Okay. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Oh, Badra Punima Srimad Bhagavatam gift. Uh, we had Badra Punima during a week. And <clears throat> We have extended that uh, special of uh, Badra Purnima for the end of, until the end of this year. Uh, we had a goal of 108 sets. Probably we are at 45 sets is already distributed. Uh, still some way to go. If you would like to gift Bhagavatam set to anybody or almost Adik Mas is a wonderful time also. During that time you can do that. Um, or right now, Peter Pax is going on. Also, uh, on behalf of your ancestors, also you can gift a Simad Bhagavatam um, or distribute Simad Bhagavatam to somebody, and you'll get um, lots of benefit from that. Uh, yep. Okay. That note. We Hare Krishna, one child. Humble and to all the way. Thank you, Hare Krishna, Dandavad, 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 Hare Krishna,